fashion is communication and also an art and mastering them both is impossible without proper guidance and a mentor. Hello viewers, bringing you another episode on career guidance and today we are here at National Institute of Fashion Technology, an institute which is built with an objective of educating the creative mind to be more creative and also for sustainability. In today's episode, we have with us Dr. Arindam Das, who is currently the campus director of NIF campus. Introducing him, he has also completed his master in fashion management and also PhD from NIFT Delhi. He has also served as a conference panel member with the International Foundation of Fashion Technology Institutes and has also been a member of Nottingham Trent University UK Validation Committees. Dr. Das also served as a director of various campus. We have the Delhi, Bhopal and Gandhinagar campus. And like any one of us, he also has a hobby. He loves playing guitar and enjoys reading, traveling and unraveling cryptid crosswords. Introducing you, Mr. Aridam Das. So I welcome you in today's episode of Career Guidance. Thank you so much. Well, my heart is welcome to you once again, sir. And I believe by the end of today's session, the viewers who is going to watch this program will have a better insight on you know, the fashion industry, about your campus, and also about the institute that you're holding right now in the position. So to begin with, sir, can you just brief us about the history of NIFT, and also you can provide us details about it. Right, uh, to start with, uh, NIF Shillong, is the only NIFT or leading fashion institute across the entire Northeast, and we are very proud of that. Uh, NIFT in itself started in 1987 in New Delhi. In 1995, we added uh, six more branches. We had Bangalore, Chennai, Gandhinagar, Hyderabad, Mumbai, and Kolkata. And over the years, NIFT has grown to 18 campuses all across the country. The latest one being set up this year in, uh, the, in Daman, in the Union Territory of Daman, Diu. NIF Shillong itself was set up in 2008. Okay, so, so in total across India you have around 18 campuses? We have 18 campuses. Okay. And um, can you just uh, brief us about the courses available or you know, in simple terms you can just tell us what NIF is all about? Right. See, um, in terms of normal perception people think NIFT is only about fashion and clothes but we are much, much wider than that. NIFT has a total of 10 courses, 7 at the undergraduate level which is you join after completing 10 plus 2. And three, we have three postgraduate courses, which is after graduation. NIF Delhi being the oldest campus is the only campus which offers all 10. Okay. At NIF Shillong, we offer five courses, four at the UG level and one at the PG level. The courses we have at the UG level are fashion design, textile design, accessory design, and fashion communication. And the postgraduate level, PG level, we have master of fashion communication. That's the bouquet of courses we offer at NIF Shillong. Okay. And uh, also, so when I was, you know, uh, doing some research about NIF, I came across, you know, the, the continuing education program. So can you just brief, you know, the viewers about it? Yeah, that's a very exciting concept in the sense uh, we also uh, offer courses for people from the industry or students who are interested in, you know, getting training or, you know, learning in related to fashion, but who cannot, you know, join a full-time course for whatever reason. So the continuing education program is basically about updation of skills. We normally offer on a limited time basis, say let's say in the evenings. We did launch our first uh, continuing education program in 2020. And now after the lockdown, we are immediately offering two uh, from NIF Shillong. One is from the fashion communication uh, department in terms of fashion styling. And the other one is from the fashion management department uh, relating to store operations. Can we term this uh, continuing education program as short term courses? Yeah, these are relatively short term. Our full time programs are either two year or four year. A CE or a continuing education program could be anything from three months to uh, one year. We get three months to one year. Yeah. Then, uh, and um, when it comes to enrollment, enrollment process, what is the process of getting admission here in your institute? For the mainline programs? Yes. Uh, see, we have an all India test. Now, the test comprises of two parts. The first part is the written test, in which we have a CAT or a creative ability test, and a GAT, which is a general ability test. So if one opts for or is applying for a design course, then one has to offer both the uh, tests. 
or if one is applying for a non-design course, then one can give only the GAT. So based on the outcome of the written test, there is of course a cutoff mark, All India cutoff mark, and people who qualify in the written test are called for the second round. Now the second round of test comprises for UG, it is a situation test, where we give a certain task to, us, to the student based on a situation, and we, we look at the strategic thinking and creative outcomes. And for PG programs, we do not have a situation test, but we have a group discussion and interview. So based on the outcomes of both this test, we arrive at a score, and we arrive at a rank which is known as the common merit rank. Based on that CMR, the student gets to choose the campus or the course of his or her choice. So when you talk about you know, situation tests, you know, when, when we you know, go for any kind of entrance exams, we just know practicals. So can you just elaborate on you know, situation tests? What kind of situations are you put in? Yeah, it's actually a, it's a fun task. Okay. You know, you're given a set of materials, day-to-day -day materials, could be old newspapers, you know, different, maybe some straws or you know, some clay. And then we give a situation. We say, this, these are the materials in front of you. How would you design, let's say, your school okay. canteen or your college canteen? And there's a limited time. So we look at how the students has been able to strategically use the materials. Uh, for example, it is not necessary that you use everything which is given to you. And what is the outcome in terms of how creative is that output? And also, sir, getting back into the enrollment process, is there any you know, uh, special seat reserved for special category or for any merit-list student? So we have uh, different categories, uh, like with all national institutes, we have categories like general, okay. SC, ST, OBC, uh, EWS, economically weaker sections. Now what is significant that in nine NIFT campuses, we also have a category called the domicile category, which means anybody who has completed the qualifying exam from that state is uh, eligible to apply under the domicile category. Now what is very significant from NIF, for NIFT Shillong from this year, Earlier, the domicile category was applicable only to residents or students from Meghalaya. Okay. From this year, we have expanded to, to all the eight northeastern states. Oh. And this year, we have had a wide, you know, wider number of students who have joined under the domicile category. And uh, statistically comparing about the enrollment, do we have more locals or we have more outstation students here? See, so. we have an all India recruitment process. So in your enrollment in a particular campus depends on your rank. So actually we have a quite a cosmopolitan mix of students. For example, in NIF Shillong, we have students from about say 23, 24 states in Union territories. So it's a good mix. And we also have students from the Northeast. So I'd say it's, it's a kind of very balanced and uh, well, well structured mix of students, right, with different intercultural you know, yes. exchanges. And uh, when you talk about uh, the facilities for the students here, can you just brief us about the facilities that you have in your campus? Yes, uh, in addition to what we call normal classrooms, make all our courses are very practical based. So all the design courses will have specialized labs. You know, we have specialized computer labs, we have different kind of facilities. For example, we may have a pattern making studio, a garment construction studio, photography studio. And then we have special software for the students. And then we also provide uh, hostel accommodation. We have our own uh, campus hostels at Um Saudi, boys and a girls hostel. And we also have an additional girls hostel at Nong Thim Mai. You know, so we have adequate hostel facilities for all our students. And plus we have other things like a stationary shop and other facilities for the students on campus. We have a lovely amphitheater where we have lots of events. So it's a very kind of uh, uh, diverse range of facilities we offer to the students. And when you talk about, you also have a photography labs, right? So when you talk about photography, do you hire a photographer from outside or you train your students, you know, when it comes to photography as well, basic photography? No, this, it would be even advanced photography. Advanced. For example, we have the course called Fashion Communication. Okay. So students have to do a range of exercises starting from basic to advanced photography, where the training is imparted not only by our own faculty, we also call in experts from outside, right. experts from the industry. And can you tell us, you know, the, the total strength of your faculty members and their speciality in the expertise field? We have a total of about uh, uh, 25, 30 full-time faculty members. The current strength at NIF Shillong of students is about uh, 450. And, uh, and our faculty are all from diverse backgrounds. We have, at NIFT, we have different competencies defined in terms of the qualifications of the faculty. So we fit the faculty into a department or in terms of teaching a particular subject based on their respective competences. 
and uh, what are the platform that you provide for your students apart from you know, the college fest that you annually have? Yeah, we, we believe, um, especially on campus, it should be you know, very you know, active or interactive with lots of activities. Uh, we have our own uh, event called Spectrum, which is normally held in the month of February each year. It's like a college festival, but uh, in addition to our own students, we also invite students from other colleges nearby, and we invite them to participate and compete with our students with good camaraderie. And then NIFT also has its own event called Converge, in which different, it's an inter-campus competition uh, linked to sports, cultural activities, literary activities. Uh, then we have other activities on campus. It could be, uh, we have a concept called Zero R. So every Wednesday we have an activity where we, we recently had a special workshop on issues related to ragging. So it could be a serious issue like that, or it could be a fun uh, event. Uh, it could be a musical program. It could be a dance presentation by students. It could be an expert by a lecture on a different topic. So it's a wide kaleidoscope of events which we have for students throughout the year. And do you also, you know, conduct exhibitions or you have, you know, a tie up with the government or with any sort of a handicraft or hand loom department? Yes, uh, we do exhibit our students' works from time to time. Uh, most significant is what we know as the graduation uh, project show where students who go to the industry, they do specific projects for us in the industry as part of the graduating, final graduation project. So these are showcased to the public in large. Uh, we also have a crafts bazaar every year where we invite artisans and craftspersons from all over Northeast, right from handlooms to handicrafts. And uh, we offer the artisans not only a platform to showcase what they have made, but also in our market opportunity. And we just had a very successful Crafts Bazaar in April. And uh, these are some of the on-campus activities. Now, a very important activity our students do, they have a cluster activity, where they go and visit clusters. They spend five to seven days with artisans, learn from them, exchange design ideas, which result in mostly in product development of that craft or cluster. And when you talk about exhibitions at the graduation, you know, called the graduation projects, like. So uh, do you train your students before they actually step into you know, the world of competition? Absolutely, and, and that uh, kind of training is taken in, in, in gradations. Okay. Now, what is interesting is all our design programs uh, have a common foundation program. So irrespective of whether you specialize in fashion design or accessory design or textile design or whatever, there's a common foundation which everyone goes through. And from the second year, you specialize. And even in specialism, there are different kinds of, you know, some stepping up of the students' abilities and learnings. And what is also very unique about the NIF curriculum, we have a concept called general electives, which are both mandatory and optional. And it covers a wide range of subjects, right from critical thinking to yoga, to personality development. And uh, so what we feel that in addition to your domain knowledge, the students should also develop certain soft skills. And like you said, they're about to you know, join the industry or they set up something of their own in a competitive world. So we believe that all round development of skills is very important. And when you know, they're all the verge of completing their graduation level or you know, their the diploma or the thing. So do you have any tie up or job placement for the internship programs? For the yes, uh, uh, in terms of engagement with the industry, we have uh, three important aspects. One is that a student may join a project along with faculty for the industry. Secondly, a student has to go for an internship. And finally, we have uh, campus placements. Uh, normally, the campus placements are held in some of the larger campus to facilitate centralized placement, which is both offline and online. But we do have centralized campus placements for all our students from all, all campuses. All right. And uh, do you also provide any sorts of financial assistance or any sort of, you know, help for the students who is almost at the verge of completing the course? No, we do that much before that. In okay. fact, uh, from the second semester onwards, we have our own scholarship scheme. And students need to apply their certain conditions, of course, and certain criteria. And if a student qualifies, uh, he or she get, can get a, added a partial or a full scholarship. In addition to our own scholarship, there are also very special schemes from the central government for state governments. And especially, not only for, um, uh, you know, uh, especially for uh, students from SCST backgrounds. Okay. And there is a lot of financial help and assistance from, like I said, uh, state governments. And uh, we are in touch with the central agencies and state governments. 
And whenever we receive information about uh, such scholarships, we do share them with the students and we help them in the application process. And we talk about a scholarship, we're not talking about the reservation right now, we're just basically, I just want to have a better picture, is it you know, meritless or is it for, for everyone? Um, Apart so, from the reservation. Yeah, for example, our own uh, scholarship, which we call Sarthak, uh, there are certain criteria like the student's performance in the first semester, uh, the student's performance at the time, what was his common merit rank, uh, there are certain income levels specified. So based on three or four factors, then it, it's a kind of a merit list in the sense you qualify on this criteria, so you, you, you okay, get you selected for, for the scholarship. For the scheme, all right. And uh, as for now, what are the skills you think is necessary to uh, be successful in the fashion industry as you being from the you know, fashion background and you have completed your master and PhD? I think it's very important to be aware, you know. Um, uh, there is a kind of a pitfall that you think if you're doing fashion design, you're looking only at clothes. But then one needs to know what's happening in the world of art, world of film, what's happening in terms of street fashion. And I keep saying again and again, Shillong perhaps is one of the best examples of fantastic street fashion, music, you know, culture, lifestyle. So one has to have an all round awareness of what's happening. And very, very important, sometimes overlooked, is that there is a strong touch or convergence with technology. If you look at any design products, whether fashion or otherwise, all successful products have a very strong merging of technology and design. So these are the key factors in, you know, to when you become a professional. And as you know, your campus is set up here in the state of Miklaya, so how do you think it's important you know, to uh, involve tradition and you know, the, the technical aspect as well? The, the traditional touch, is there any sort of, you know, courses or any special classes that you provide for, for the students who come to traditional touch? Who comes to the yes, see, we do that in two ways. One is that we conduct uh, field visits for our students. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's very, very important to be in touch with your roots, to understand, uh, and we have such a strong, strong and rich heritage of crafts and culture. So our students do that not only to field visits, and I, like I mentioned earlier, in, when they go for the cluster visits, it's a very important kind of exercise because uh, the craft, which has been kind of practiced for many, many years or decades, and we are working with extremely talented craftsperson. So the students work with them in terms of learning from them from the craftsman and yet sharing their design sensitivity. So that the outcome is a traditional product which has been given a contemporary touch for modern markets. And when we talk about ethics, what is, you know, the most important thing in the fashion industry? I think ethics is an all-round concept. Yes, it's all-round, but then when it comes specifically for, for fashion, is there any sets of rules or, you know? We do have special inputs on issues like ethics, okay. copyright, and um, you may say normally in the fashion world, one of the um, burning issues is issues of copyright. Is, did yes. somebody copy it from somebody? Similar to what happens in the music or in the film industry. So we do sensitize as students to issues of ethics, uh, intellectual property rights, professional behavior, professional interaction, and these are all part of our inputs. And so throughout your journey, being as a director in different campus, what is you know, most challenging in the fashion industry and also especially in dealing with the youths today? I think the most challenging factor is uh, people. And you know, and uh, generous in change. You know, and, and that's a normal process, you know. Uh, what we used to think, the kind of lifestyle or activities we had in our, when I was a young student, is very different from the child or the young student from now. So the first thing one is to accept that. And as a, as a teacher or as a facilitator or as a mentor, one is to factor that. So uh, one important thing is that today's generation is uh, uh, kind of relatively impatient. You know, they want instant results. So one of the key uh, areas is to mold them and to mentor them that certain processes take time and one has to be patient. And uh, I think one of the most important qualities anybody can have in terms of achieving success is perseverance. You know, you have to keep going at it. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not like your two minute Maggie noodles. You know, so one has to be at it and very, very important, one has to have the confidence, not lose it. And one has to have the right attitude. And so as an institute, Particularly Shillong campus, what is you know the, the challenging thing that you know you've come across day to day? 
Yeah, in the sense, uh, we are a new campus and uh, we have kind of, although we shifted here a couple of years back because of lockdown, we were mostly online. So now that uh, we're coming, we're learning uh, how to best use our facilities. You know, we, in the, one of the challenges is to provide, let's say, host, for the hostel in Nong Thim Mai, to provide bus facilities, so, and to interact with the industry from this location. So it's, it's a learning process, but uh, the advantage or the plus point is it's a fabulous, beautiful campus. We have some great people on campus, both students and faculty and staff, and uh, we should soon be going into our second phase of construction. Uh, we've just completed the first phase. And we are very, very optimistic. And uh, most importantly, many people not, don't know this, that NIF Shillong has been ranked by different agencies as one of the top 10 fashion institutes in the country. Not many people are aware of that. We are proud of that. Mm. We are proud of that as well, Sabine right. from Miglaya, all right. And uh, also my next question to you is, what is the vision of the Institute in the, in the, you know, in the, in the near future? Yeah, I think the one important vision is to be inclusive, you know. Uh, our students should be able to not only contribute to the industry, but also to work for the upliftment of craftsmen, society in general, be responsible citizens through what they do in terms of, like you said, ethics, in terms of uh, a sustainable environment for the future generations. Uh, NIF Shillong has, had, uh, has signed two historic MOUs, one with the Northeastern Handicrafts and Handloom Development Corporation, mainly for the promotion and encouragement of crafts, craftsmen and artisans in the Northeast. We also have an MOU with IIM Shillong, which is wide ranging and covers not only management, but design aspects sharing of resources. So we feel that when we offer such platforms to our students, they will be encouraged and they will be supported in, in achieving their goals in life and achieving the goals in life with a lot of social responsibility. And uh, since the time you started here, 2008, the institute started back in 2008 until date, uh, how many students have been enrolled and can you share some of the successful stories so that you know the viewers who's watching this program right okay. now, they get inspired? Right, uh, we started in 2008. Uh, so far, uh, Nif Shillong would have had about, maybe about a thousand graduates. And significantly, uh, many of our students, especially our senior students, are placed in uh, very, very responsible and key positions in the industry. One or two names which I can think of is uh, Mr. Sumit Srivastava. He was uh, in a very senior position with Shahi Exports. Uh, now he's in the US. Is uh, working as a buyer in the U.S. and being a buyer in the U.S. is you know is a, is a big time job. You know it's a very responsible job. Then we have also a local student, Ms. Lapin Saiborn. She has uh, she's an entrepreneur. She has her own boutique and doing very very well. And there are of course many other examples. If I may have inadvertently left out somebody, but uh, these are the names which immediately come to mind. But yes, uh, our alumni have been quite successful. Apart from the normal enrollment, do you also have any special enrollment? Yes, I think that's very important to uh, let everyone know that uh, we have special seats for artisans and children of artisans because we feel it's very, very important sometimes the craft or the artisanship or the craftsmanship is not carried forward because there's no adequate training. So NIFT in all its campuses, we have a special program where we have seats reserved for artisans or children of artisans. That's one. The other important aspect that we also have a facility of lateral entry. So in a lateral entry, there are two kinds of categories. One is that anybody who would have passed a 10 standard or equivalent and would have done a three to four year diploma program in related areas. It's a fashion accessories or related areas. That's one criteria. The other is that it could be a 12 pass. And if you have a two year diploma from NIFT, you know, we have diploma programs. So one can get entry directly into the second year of the NIF program, that's called the lateral entry. So these are some of the special incentives we have for enrollment for uh, people around. And uh, before we, we wind up the session, I just want you to you know, give us a thoughtful message for the youth who's watching this program right now and also for any aspiring fashion designer who wants to step into the world of fashion. Yeah, I think um, the most important message would be follow your passion. We normally have questions like, which course is the best? Is it fashion design, textile design, fashion communication? There is no best course. All the courses are good, otherwise we wouldn't have offered. So I think it's important for the student or the applicant to follow your passion, do what you want to do, 
not what you have to do. So if, you, if you're doing what you're passionate about, you will always excel. I think that's the bottom line. Uh, you follow your passion, believe yourself, and move forward. Uh, one more uh, aspect I'd like to add, uh, these television programs or any, any other campaign you have through the media, is, they are very, very important. But I think the most important to have an experiential feel. So I invite everybody to visit the NIF Shillong Umsawali campus. We are a lovely campus. Come and visit us, see how our students work, see their products, see how faculty and staff interact with the students, move around the campus, come and sit in a lovely amphitheater, make it an experience and we'll always welcome you. Right, well sir, thank you so much for enlightening us for today and once again, thank you for sparing your valuable time. Thank you very much, it's been an honor, Kublai. Well viewers, we have come to the end of today's career guidance episode and I'm confident that today's episode has paved the way to many aspiring fashion designers who want to step into the world of fashion designing. Thank you, till then, keep watching the Darshan Camera Shalom.